What's up, everybody? I just found out we had technical difficulties with uh, my guests getting the logon information for the show. So no wonder nobody was here. I had no idea that they didn't get the email. This is terrible. But you know what? One guest has made it. And so um, we'll just hope I sent the just sent resent the email individually this time. So let's hope that, you know, that they get it in time and didn't just think that I was flaking and just wasting their time because that really was not the case. But uh, let's get started. Today's topic. Um, it's not really a Sunday sermon, but it's just a Sunday discussion. We're going to be talking about uh, polyamory. Polyamory, which is a little bit different from polygamy because polyamory has to do with multiple partners, whether you're married or not. I mean, that's just like your philosophy. And poly, whatever, polygamy is multiple spouses. So there's a difference. We're not really going to talk about that because in the United States, that is illegal, right? So you can really only have one spouse. Not only that, the show primarily deals with the odd, you know, with single unmarried people. Uh, so there's really no point in us talking about, you know, marriages and all of that, multiple marriages. We're going to talk about this kind of relatively new relationship pattern. At least I didn't really hear that much about it. I mean, in the 60s, you know, when I was a little kid, 70s and stuff, it was like, you know, you heard about that from the hippies. I grew up in San Francisco. And so they would have like these houses out in Haight Ashbury. And, you know, they had communes in Marin County and stuff. And so, you know, it was kind of this fringe thing where nobody who, you know, no normal people did it. It was all these, you know, hippies. That's, I mean, that was what do they lived in like Santa Rosa or Napa or somewhere? And they all lived in these big farms and they grew their own vegetables and, you know, they had free love and all this stuff. I mean, I grew up hearing that kind of stuff. And so then, I don't know, I didn't hear anything about it. But then within, the, I say, the last 10, 15 years, you started hearing about uh, poly polyamory and polygynous types of relationships cropping up again, um, really in the, the black community, the, the, the Muslims were really promoting it. And then, you know, it's just kind of caught on to the mainstream. So we wanted to talk about it because really like right now, it's, there's a resurgence of this kind of conversation and it's being pushed since there's so many, you know, single women now and so many single parent homes. It's kind of being pushed on that different demographic of women as being a solution to them being alone and raising their children alone and the children being fatherless and poverty and all kinds of stuff. So it's like being looking at like the magic wand, like dink a dink a dink bewitched or something is going to solve everybody's problem. So I wanted to get a panel together. I see my guests over there laughing. I wanted to get a panel together, you know, with people who have way more, you know, knowledge and experience about it than me to talk about it with you. Because, you know, I mean, just thinking about it, really, you know, the, it's mentioned a lot here that how women are like raised on Disney and how that impacted their their story, you know, their choices in life and their fantasies about men and marriage and relationships. But, you know, if you think about the fairy tales that we read as kids and the Disney stories, we, it was always like one man with one woman. Right. And then, you, you know, your prince rode in on a shining steed and, and then you rode off into the sunset and lived happily ever after. Nobody had a fantasy where it was going to be them with some man and two or three women. It just was not anybody. Nobody I knew anyway seemed to have that dream. So uh, let me make my guest live onto the show. And let's see, how am I going to do this? I'm going to put us both here and I'm going to do this. What's up, girlfriend? Uh-oh, I don't hear you. I don't hear your mic. Let me see. Yeah, everything's set over here. Everything? Nope, hang on. We're just going to do this the easy way. We can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Check your sound settings. In, are you using Windows? I don't know, if you're using Windows, check your sound settings. I don't know what to tell you about a Macintosh. Apple, Mac, whatever. Let 
Well, while she does that, you guys, you know, let us talk about what, you know, I found this article. It was real interesting because it went into, like, there's all these different types of polyamorous relationships. It has all these fancy names. Where's that paper? Here it is. Okay. There's something called V. One person who's dating two people who are not romantically or physically involved with each other. Oh, okay. That's old-fashioned cheating. That's what we call it, right? Because you just involved with, and then you don't know about the other person. Hmm, that's interesting. There's a kind called a triad. And it says triad is a tri a thruple, like couple with a TH in front of it to mean three people, a thruple. It's a relationship between three partners who are all romantically or physically involved with each other. Hmm. Okay. A quad. A quad is a relationship between four partners who are romantically or sexually involved with each other. This could be two primary couples connecting or adding another partner in a triad. You might have to reboot. I hope not. Sometimes that helps me with my my issues. My 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 many issues that my followers have seen me have <laughs> on the show. Can you hear me now? There's something called Hierarch hierarchical polyamory. This type places more importance on the relationship over other relationships in the polycule. Okay, I guess she's rebooting. A primary partner is often the person that they are married to, share finances with, or live with. Primary partners will prioritize each other when making decisions and commitments. So it's like there's I think this is the situation in a lot of the kind of marriages they talk about where the husband has like a first wife, right? And then he wants to get like a second and third, but we're not talking about marriages though, but we're, you know, just in the, he wants to get a second or third partner. So the one who's first has the power and influence and like, you know, the lead position over everybody versus the new people that come into the, into the fold. Okay. I think that's what that means. Yeah, I know. Can't hear the guest, but um, yeah, there's a lot of Polly Ash. I didn't realize there were this many. Oh, you were able to hear her? Okay. Yeah, nobody. Okay, you can hear her. All right. Let me uh, do this then. Maybe that's the problem. I have to hear it through uh, this thing here. Hold on a second. It's usually I can just hear it through the computer, but maybe I have to do it this way. So let's see if this helps. Can I hear you now? There you are. All right, you can hear me. Yes. Beautiful. Technology is wonderful when it works. Girl, okay. That's what All I'm right. saying. <laughs> so let's All get right. this started. I All was right. trying to give them a little overview. Um, and uh, there, you, you got most of it on point when the overview. Um, and then I didn't even get down to the bottom. There's something called kitchen table. Kitchen table polyamory is what my partners and I actually practice. Oh. Um, so um, if you'd like me to explain it. I would like that. Because I'm just okay. reading from a piece of paper. All right. So polyamory, in, in essence, um, is a philosophy that recognizes each individual human being as their own autonomous person. So we can have as many relationships in as many different ways as we choose as individual people. And our other partners and our friends all respect that. So um, I actually have three male partners. I live with two of them. Um, I've been polyamorous. I'm so jealous. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> that, 
girl, don't be more men, more problems. That's what I tell everybody. More men, more problems. Um, it takes, it takes time. It takes effort. It takes, if you, if y'all are uh, familiar with spoon theory for, for people who live with chronic disability or chronic illness. So, you know, every, every action you take every day costs a spoon. It costs a spoon to wash your hair. You, you wake up with so many spoons, right? You got to wash your hair. That's a spoon. You got to fold the laundry. That's a spoon. Some days though, getting out of bed is a whole spoon. Yeah. Some days changing your underwear just so you got clean drawers on is a spoon. So it really, it takes respect, communication, spoons to deal with all these men. Um, especially when you live with two of them. Yeah. Mm. So um, kitchen table polyamory is what my partners and I prefer because I have a friendship relationship with my metamors. So my partners, other partners are friends with me. We will make the effort to go out and do girls nights or just meta nights because um, one of my partners is bisexual. Um, so, you know, we'll, we'll go do craft days. We'll go shopping. We'll back each other up. If, if one of them is being a dickhead and we'll call them all out like as a group and be like, look, you are doing this and it is hurting all of us in these ways. What can we do to help you figure out what is wrong and, and, and fix why you're acting out. Um, oh, I like that. Right. So we have each other's backs. We'll, we'll do, you know, uh, family brunches. We'll do game nights. We'll um, go do picnics, but all this takes scheduling and planning, which is why Google calendar <laughs> is the best thing ever <laughs> because we can all have multiple calendars that, you know, so like, I have a calendar with each of my partners, so I know when we're planning what, and we have a household calendar. So the people in this house all know what's happening. And then there's a calendar in which we can see the whole polycule and what everybody's doing. So we can figure out who's oh, wait, wait, gonna wait. be where. Polycule, new term. Okay, polycule. So you, th you think of a molecule in uh -huh. chemistry. And so you have, you have you know, the center atom of let's just we'll use water right so you've got your oxygen and then you've got two hydrogen on either side of it that is the basic v polycule so you've got one partner in the center that's the hinge with two other partners that do not date that is what a v is ah right okay so none of my partners date each other um two of them just just don't find men attractive um and the other one they're not his type. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's, I prefer kitchen table poly because, you know, I always know that, that, um, my, my meta J has my back and she knows that I have her back. Um, now I have two partners or two uh, two partners I live with one of one, the third one is long distance and his other partners prefer parallel polyamory. So I don't have a relationship with them. They don't have the time, the energy, the desire to make friends with somebody who lives 2000 miles away from them. Right. And that's okay. I respect that boundary and any message that I need to send to one of them, like when, when, um, one of them, uh, her daughter had a baby and I wanted to say congratulations. I passed that through him. I said, would you please tell her? I said, congratulations. And I'm very happy for her. And he did. So we rely on him as the go between with information. Wow. This sounds rather complicated. Yeah. And so when people say, is polyamory a solution for single women? I laugh <laughs> because it's a lot of work and ain't nobody got a lot of time for that. Especially when you have men using polyamory as a blanket idea in which to cheat. Um, yeah, that's what seems to be. Oh, somebody asked a really good question. Maya just asked, is there jealousy? Yes. Yes, there is jealousy. Oh yeah. Let's put our question up. Yes. Jealousy is very important because for me, at least, it tells me 
that I have a need that is being ignored, that is not being met by one of my partners. And I need to use my big girl words, which was really hard to learn how to do when I was 20, because I've been doing this for 20 years. Wow. Um, and man, that was, that was tough. Um, but it, I have to tell them, look, you are spending all of this time with your other partner and that's cool, but I am feeling neglected because you are not here when I needed you for this reason. And could we please, you know, schedule some more time together so that I get what I need and I don't feel jealous of her getting what she needs from you. And so I welcome jealousy. Jealousy is a normal, healthy feeling. What is not healthy is when you let it turn into a complete meltdown and tantrum and scream and cry and holler and, and get all your feelings out without using words to remedy the feelings. I got you. Well, I wanted to add, go back and ask you, um, sure. before you started with the poly lifestyle, were you in a mono, you know, a traditional monogamous relationship? I was, we were all in college and I mean, college is the time for experimentation mm -hmm. and insanity and stupidity and all of the above making poor, poor decisions. And where I went to school, I don't want to, don't want to give away too much identifying yeah. information, but let's just say um, there was a very high ratio of men to women, specifically okay. straight men to straight women. And so it was very easy to play the field and just, you know, nothing serious. You know, this guy would take me out for dinner this day and this guy would, we'd go out for lunch another day and this guy would go for a walk around the park a different day and nothing was serious, at least on my end. And, you know, some things got serious eventually with one and it didn't end well. And eventually, um, I just kind of fell into a polyamorous V with one of my current nesting partners and another guy who was actually a grad school in my department or grad student in my department. And um, we had a great time together. We'd all go out to dinner together and we'd watch old Rat Pack movies together. We had some of the best times. And they would say, no, man, it's your turn to take her home. No, it's your turn because I took her <laughs> home last night. And they got along great. And it wasn't until we got some some bad family news on my end that the other guy did not act like a partner. He didn't support me um, when we found out we had a family member dying. And I needed that because it was my last semester of school. It was it was really, really tough. I was trying to write a big term paper. Uh, it's not really a term paper. It was kind of like a the equivalent of an undergraduate thesis. And I had no support from him and only, only G was there for me. Um, and we, at that point said, you know what? No, I'm cutting him loose. Mm -hmm. I, I can't do this right now. I've got, I've got you as my rock and that's it. So for several years, it was just the two of us. We actually got married. Um, he is my best friend has been for 20 years <laughs> plus. Nice. Um, and then a while back, he said, you know what? Would We had a great time, except for him being a dickhead. And I said, well, yeah. You want to try that again? Sure. And I said, sure, knowing that, you know, I'm a middle-aged, fat, white chick. You know, who I'm thinking, who's going to want to date me, Right. Yeah, but you have personality. Well, I, you, you know, it's, it's been, it's been. It work. comes through. And so it's, <laughs> it's been, it's been a heck of a thing. Um, and I have more partners than he does because apparently, you know, chubby white guys like chubby white chicks. I, mm. <laughs> and I have a type. like I love her, you guys. I just love her. I have, I have a type too. It's very obvious because if you line all three of them up together, they're, they have some very striking similar characteristics. Really? And, yeah. I have a definite type. That's the joke in the house is that um, 
my other nesting partner is actually 10 years my junior. So he's he's much younger. And the joke but is that. Okay now. Right. Um, <laughs> the joke is that I, I upgraded and I got the, the newer model here with a different color pack because his eyes are a different color and his hair is a different color. <laughs> but everything else is the same. <laughs> This is starting out to be a lot funnier than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> well, you know, if you can't laugh, then what's the point? I mean, what happens in situations, girl? Let me tell you, ask this because this, you know, I was reading. What did I print those letters out? And I thought, oh, I thank did. you, Maya. You're so sweet to say that. <laughs> um, there were some letters I saw online where people were writing in about these kind of, you know, relationships. And one of the women, uh, no, yeah, no, wait, was it the woman or the man? Yeah, it was a woman. And they, you know, had converted their relationship to Polly mm -hmm. and done that for a number of years. And now her husband wanted to go back to oh. being monogamous. Ooh. Have you heard of that happening? And that actually happened with friends of mine, um, really good friends of mine. Um, before we, before I continue to answer this question, let's not lose, Yvonne asked who cooks and cleans and does chores. So let's pin that for a second. Cause that's important. Oh, um, let me find Cause her. when you've got multiple, multiple people living together, you got multiple messes. <laughs> I can imagine. Yeah. Um, so, um, these, these two friends of mine that, that stopped being polyamorous, um, that ended because he was dating a very toxic individual who was quite abusive and in in the blatant disrespect that she showed for his other partner uh, she also mentally and emotionally abused him by trying to convince him that he was unable to be polyamorous and what she was basically trying to do was steal him so she could leave her husband and have a new partner to take care of her and pamper her like a princess, which is eventually what happened down the line with another couple that she broke up. Oh, right. And so now poor Jay, um, not my metamor Jay, but his initials Jay, he, he is convinced that he can't be polyamorous and his other partner broke up with all of her other partners. She broke things off so they could stay monogamous and work on their relationship because they were nested. They lived together. They shared income. And when you have a nesting partner situation, even if you're unmarried, it's very important to focus on that because y'all live together. Right. And that's if, if things are not stable and happy at home, nothing, nothing is going to be good anywhere else. Wow. Um, so right now, um, they, they are monogamous and, but they, we still, we still joke and we still call them part of our extended polycule. Um, because I always wanted to date him and one of my part, both of my partners wanted to date her. Um, and I love them to death. I, I really wish that she was my metamor. Um, and it, it breaks my heart that he went through that and that she went through that and that they had to make that decision. Um, and so this evidently, does, is this free, this happen frequently? I mean, not with that much drama and pain, but I oh, mean, it is can. This, that's kind of a, a metamorphosis that some couples go through. It can. And it's, it is very much a danger, particularly when you're dealing with someone who is new to polyamory, um, like Jay was. Um, now, he had successfully had two to three partners at one time. And then here comes Miss Toxic Winch from Hades and ruined it all. Um, she has caused a lot of drama <laughs> in our local circles. And she's just kind of like persona non grata where we live. Everybody's well, here's got a her question. number. Oops, this one. Do Michelle we split the bills? Know how you split the, you know, how the finances are handled. So uh, G and I are married and we bought this house together. Um, when Kay moved in, we were not together. Kay moved in. He was just a friend of ours who we were helping get out of a toxic relationship. And I did not know it because remember when I said, you know, who who's going to want to date a middle-aged fat woman? Mm -hmm. <laughs> remember that? I didn't know it, but Kay had been carrying a torch for me 
and he wasn't acting on it because his other his partner at the time who was married um and he was living with them didn't let any woman near him like she was trying to keep all of her partners to herself and not let them have autonomy which is not poly that is not cool it's abusive and disrespectful um and so she threw him out after she broke up with him for some petty reason i don't want to give away too much because yeah it's crazy um but he moved in and and we're like dude just get some financial stability under you you know give us a hundred bucks a month for a while and you'll get on your feet well then one thing led to another and um oops he's not moving out <laughs> <laughs> but now he pays a, a a decent chunk of rent that covers you know the, the the room that we don't get to use anymore for a guest room and a lot of the food that he eats and the bump in utilities right and, and but he pays for you know his truck insurance and um you know his storage unit because all of his stuff can't fit in our house i mean we we are literally looking at buying a different house down like in a few years so we have more space um and we can get rid of that damn storage unit yeah that was but very expensive now when we're we are ha have a kind of a unique situation because i cannot have children so we don't have to worry about things like child care um well, I that was my hoping, next question how yeah. does how does that work i keep hoping he will find a he he has such higher standards now for what he wants in a partner and how he expects to be treated which makes me smile um I keep hoping he'll find a wonderful woman closer to his own age that wants to have children who would love to have some free childcare once in a while. Auto bomb. Yep. Yep. My, my house Panther decided he was going to come. Hey kitty. <laughs> Ooh, there's an important question. STI concerns. Of course you always, you always talk about sexual health. You always get tested. I mean, every six months, even if you're not adding a new partner, just be in the habit of it. Minimum. Artan, what are you doing? <laughs> I don't know if you can hear him. He's purring. No, but we just see him just all in the camera. <laughs> yeah. See your pretty green eyes. There you go. Yeah. Hi, kitty. Yeah, hi there. It's Everybody says funny. hi. Um, but, you know, the first thing he did when he decided to jump the gun and not finish getting over his trauma experience and get with me was go get an STI screen. Um. I get them every six months. We have a very lively LGBTQ plus community where I live. And we have a great organization called The Friends and they provide free STI screenings at Pride events. So every six months there's an event and we just go get our free STI screens. Nice. Um, in yeah, fact, we, more, we have- more people would do that. Right. And we have a rampant problem with uh, hepatitis A in this area as well. And they also provided free hepatitis A vaccines at Pride events. So. That's good. Well, let's, well how do you respond to the question? Um, this one woman, and I, this, I'm pulling this from the, the channel wall. And she says, to me, it's just glorified cheating. It's not cheating if you all know about each other and consent to it. Cheating is when you lie and hide it. And people who claim to be polyamorous are cheating unless their partner really knows what's going on and is okay with it. And, Artie, really? Go on. Um, Your mic is... Yeah, there we go. There we go. Thank you. <laughs> He's such a helper. Um, yes, I am in love with all of these men. Love is not finite. Um, if it, take parents, for example, you don't love any one of your children more than the other one, do you? And if you do, man, you better start asking yourself what's up because you shouldn't be loving one child any more than the other. So I love all three of my partners equally. Hmm, okay. Um, and I mean, so many people 
they think of polyamory as just like swinging. No, swinging is a different form of ethical non-monogamy. Ethical non-monogamy is a huge umbrella term, and polyamory is just one little facet underneath it. Um, so what, what can you explain what ethical non-monogamy means? Well, we know what monogamy means. Non-monogamy means you're not monogamous. Ethical non-monogamy means that everybody in the equation is on board with what is happening and cool with it. So there are no secrets. I mean, obviously, you know, it's like, I'm not going to tell certain bedroom secrets from one partner to another because that's just rude. But if one partner popped positive for something, everybody would know. Everybody would go get tested. Gotcha. That makes sense. Here's a question for you. Um, well, since I can't have children, <laughs> that's a painful question. Um, I personally can't. So, and nobody else I know has ever had unplanned pregnancies with multiple partners because we all use birth control methods that are good for our personal bodies. Um, mm -hmm. you know, myself, I have an IUD. And two of my partners have essentially, well, one has had a vasectomy and the other one essentially had a vasectomy after he was stabbed. Yeah. Yikes. Ouch. I'm just mm -hmm. imagining where he was stabbed. <laughs> just... Yeah. Oh, poor guy. Yeah. He almost didn't make it. He was 19 and oh. now he's 37 and never got the opportunity to have children. Oh. So... I can imagine that. Yeah, that's sad, especially if you wanted to have them. I mean, people have always had their their arrangements. Mumblebee asked what people were doing before ethical non-monogamy became a thing. People always had their quiet little arrangements. Mm -hmm. They just didn't have a name for it. Right. You know, they they knew. And many of them didn't care. I mean, think about it. If you were if you were an asexual woman in the 1800s expected to be married because you're a woman, right? And you marry this guy who's expected to take a wife to carry out his family name. Well, okay, you provided him with an heir, right? In one go, you got a boy, lucky you. But he's gay and doesn't want to have sex with you anyway. So you let him have his little thing and he leaves you the heck alone and you have lovely dinners together and have a beautiful child and you just roll with it. You know, sometimes like um, I remember, you know, when I was a little kid hearing my mother and my aunts and my grandmother talking about men who were married and they had a family. Right. But then on the other side of town or in the next city over, they had another woman and a whole nother family mm -hmm. of children. And it seemed like from their conversations that the women didn't necessarily mind because these are pre birth control pill days. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, they have already like seven or eight children and he's over there having babies with someone else. They're okay with that because it keeps them from getting pregnant some more. Exactly. And uh, let's see, somebody just asked about jealousy again. Uh, oh, health insurance. Yes, it is through my husband only. Um, that is where I get my health insurance. My other partners have their own health insurance because they're working men. Um, and I mean, we, we've had a conversation of, okay, what ifs? Cause you always have the what ifs at three in the morning, you know? <laughs> so what if my IUD fails and my one partner that has not had a vasectomy and I conceive and I don't miscarry, that's the thing. And I don't miscarry. What do we do? Well, uh, G said, well, we'd have to buy a bigger house because I don't want to be around a kid. So we'd need more space. Um, and Kay's like, well, obviously, um, he'd have y'all's actual surname. But we would raise our child. And I'm like, okay. Oh. Um, as far as my in-laws would know, because we're not out to them. I was going to ask that. If, in, in the poly community, shall we say, because I don't know a better term to use. Do the extended family and friends usually know about the arrangement or is it 
more some, often some of kept them quiet. Do. Some of like my my sister and my aunt, the really the only family I have left, they know. Oh, okay. Um, they have they have. In the case of my aunt and my yeah, you know, the case of my aunt, she's talked to all three of my partners on the phone. Um, my sister is actually going to be meeting Kay in a couple of weeks. We're gonna as long as COVID plays nice, we have to go down to where my sister lives and pick up some things because our mother just passed away. Oh, so, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's been a roller coaster. But um, so I need to go down with Kay's help and pick up some more of, of mom's things to bring back here. Um, so that's, you know, she's finally going to get to meet him. Um, all of our friends know, okay. all of our friends know, and our friends are either also polyamorous, queer in some way, or just really, really cool, chill people who are respectful of our life decisions. Um, we don't have a high tolerance for nastiness. Yeah. Well, I could imagine you some people. Um, oh, thank you, guys. Thank you. Would be pretty confused. Let's no. be to polite. Yeah, they would as, be confused. Right. As far as my very Southern Baptist in-laws are concerned, um, Kay is just our friend that lives with us and helps around the house after G had an injury and could not do a lot of physical labor around the house anymore. And, uh, and he was on harder times. And so we had him move in with us, which is partially the truth. I mean, it is right. a partial truth, so we don't lie, but G has said that if they ever do find out, he's going to own it because he's not going to be ashamed of our choices and, and be ashamed of, of K because he's done so much for us, um, as a, as a household, as a family unit. Right. Um, and yeah, you guys sound like really good friends. We were friends first, and that makes a big difference because um, G and I are very demisexual, so that means we we have to have a good friendship connection to build attraction on. Um, and so I'm learning so many new terms. And uh, so, oh, is there a cap on the amount of people involved in a poly relationship? So we have a we have a joke about that. Um, right now, I consider myself to be polysaturated. <laughs> with with my two nesting partners and my long distance partner and oh, then you are funny <laughs> and then i have i've got a couple of other friends male friends that i i flirt very heavily with but they they live so far away that nothing can really happen um and yeah now Kay's family knows about us i call his mother my mother outlaw and she thinks that's the coolest thing ever. <laughs> um, she, see what I mean about your personality, though? I can see why all these guys are so yeah. attracted to you. Yeah. And <laughs> it also helps that I'm in a burlesque troupe. So. Are you? Um, yeah. Oh, shoot, so, you got moves, too? Dun -dun 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 -dun. <laughs> <laughs> I'm mostly stage kitten at the moment, but one of the dancers is teaching me how to dance so that I can um, be on stage in other capacities. But, <laughs> um, and Chatelaine's actually my burlesque name. I'm hiding behind it. <laughs> That's fine. I, I you know, because when, when people don't have a, have, they are, can't come up with a name themselves, I can give them a name of a flower. I have a long list and just say pick one. Oh, flowers are lovely. Yeah. Um, and so um, my, my mother outlaw, she has has always said that, that G is more than welcome at her home at any time. Any family event she has that I'm coming to, G is welcome to come to as well. Because he is part of Kay's life. And she she loves us for it. Um. Well, I have so, a question for you. Sure. Because well, this is like a big argument. A lot of women think these, oops, relationships, I did that accidentally. <laughs> I don't know how I did that. Oh, it just uh, happens. Oh, my God. A I'm lot of women <laughs> think that. <laughs> I don't know what, to, I don't know how to get it off the screen out of a find the comment. Um, a lot of women think that these relationships benefit men more than women. What is your stance on that? 
I don't know, Deb. I mean, I've got two men paying my car payment. That uh, works for me. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, seriously, they, they, we had, we had an argument, an argument in finger quotes, um, when I went to buy my, my new car because I was trading in my mom's car. She, or, do, do y'all know that you can actually, when you buy a car, you can list a, t a person on your title as transfer to automatically upon death to avoid probate? I did not no. know this. And so my mother actually had me listed that way on her title. And I'm like, so my sister says, you need to come get this car. And I'm like, what? <laughs> what are you talking about? She's like, it's yours now. Okay. So I went and got it. And I'm like, I would never drive this thing. It's it's big it's huge it's it's smells like cigarette smoke i'm a non-smoker no you know no hate if you are but i'm not so um i traded it in or i had an opportunity to trade it in i did and i was upset because we were going to have a little bit of a car payment for for a while until her house gets sold and i can pay the rest of it off and i got in a fight <laughs> with with k um because i said i didn't think i was worth the 250 dollars a month coming out of our finances. And he said, that's the closest he's ever come to ever wanting to hit me because nobody talks about his woman that way, even her. Aww. And he informed G, he did not ask, he informed, he says, I'm going to be throwing in another hundred dollars a month in my rent to help pay for her car payment until it's paid off. So, you know, um, oh, somebody said you may have two guys making a car payment, but I'm not trying to use all four burners every time I cook. I don't cook. <laughs> <laughs> G is the better cook. Um, I do the laundry and I, I mend the clothes. I sew the clothes when, it, when they need things for special events. Um, G is a fantastic cook and that man has skills. Let me tell you. He can, I, I have a lot of weird food allergies. And so I can't like go, just go out for Chinese food. Right. Cause I, mm -hmm. I, there are things I can't eat, but that man can make the best Chinese food that's safe for me to eat at home. I don't miss it. Um, he can, I mean, he can make sushi. He can, he can do anything from the Indian subcontinent. He loves to play with North African flavors. I mean, the food is amazing. So I, I bake, like if we are having an event, we need, you know, cakes, pies, whatever, that's me. And I, I do the laundry, I clean, I don't let them touch my Speed Queen washer because no. That, no, you know, they don't need to do all that. No. <laughs> Men are too rough. Yeah. And when, when you make custom clothing, you have to be really careful how it's washed. <laughs> so um, now I do, I am the one that does most of the Lebanese cooking and most of the Mexican cooking because I grew up in the American Southwest and where I live, nobody knows how to cook with flavor. So oh. yeah. Um, to get real flavors from home, I have to, I have to do the, that. And my great aunt was from Lebanon. So I have all of her recipes and we do a lot of Lebanese food here. I love Lebanese. I just love food period. Let me just stop talking. We stop lying, <laughs> trying to single out a specific type of food. It's like if it's on the plate and it's still, I'm going to eat it. I do make my burlesque outfits and I do make for my troupe. That is how I got involved with them. Chatelaine is actually the name of is what a sewing accessory. And so that's where my, my burlesque name came from. Ah. Uh, Danny who, who has, has a question for you. Do I have different types of relationships with my partners? Like is one partner more of an emotional? No. Um... All three of them are very equally uh, balanced with emotional, mental, sexual, um, even the long distance guy. And he's on a different continent, which makes life interesting. Um, they're all the same. Now, I, I was having this conversation with Kay last night because he's getting ready finally to start thinking about dating outside of our relationship. And my main concern with him initially dating was not that I was going to be jealous, but that I wanted him to overcome some of the trauma from his previous abusive relationship. Right. Because if anybody has not experienced trauma, you may not know that one of the things that happens is you get a lot of brain fog and it's harder for you to multitask. And you have to be really, really good at multitasking when you're polyamorous. 
And I didn't want him to hearing about your calendar just made me exhausted. Right. So it's, it's, it's something that I was concerned about so that he would not feel like he was being pulled, you know, too many different ways. Um, Because it can feel like that once in a while, even for me. And so I said, you know, have you thought about easing into things and just like, you know, we've got some friends that are interested in you. Maybe you have a friends with benefits kind of thing with them first. And just ease into it. And ease into it and see if anything builds into becoming, um, you know, a full-blown, like, equal partner relationship like we have. You know, he's like, oh, yeah, that's been my plan this whole time. I said, well, you know, you should have communicated that to me because I could have saved myself hours of anxiety. Right. (laughs) Um. Do I sell my costumes to the public? Oh God, no. Oh no, they're asking Deb Cooper that. Ooh. Like costumes. Else I don't have any costumes. Right. Apparently somebody asked if somebody asked somebody about costumes. I just caught it. Oh, well, I don't know what that's all about. I don't know either. <laughs> well, I want you guys, um, you know, if you have some some questions for her, because I don't want to take up all her whole day. I promise you, you know, the guest to be here for like an hour. Oh. A. Rogers just asked a great question. No, it is not easier for men to accept additional men in the relationship um, or women. It's no, no. A lot of one of the main problems with polyamory that I see is the OPP, the one penis policy. Oh, is that what OPP (laughs) says? Yeah. OPP (laughs) and OVP, one vagina policy. Those are both pretty toxic because they negate the fact that every individual is autonomous and can make their own decisions. And it is very difficult for some men to overcome that. Um, I had a very interesting conversation actually with my therapist about this. Uh, he is a, a black man and he was think he he's, he's coming from, you know, a Christian background, a monogamous background, a divorced monogamous background, mind you. <laughs> um, and he was very confused about polyamory and how G could, you know, allow me to sleep with other men. Like, like, dude, I'm not devalued. Ah, girl, you just ran into black culture. That's what right? you ran into. In That's fact, what we have to deal with all the time. I made a note. There's a there's a book coming out. I don't know if it's out yet. But it's called Love, A Black Revolution by Ron and Lisa Young. They run a website called blackandpoly.org. And they they wrote an excerpt in the latest edition of The Ethical Slut, the third edition that was just published in, uh, when was that? The third edition came out in 2017. That's a really great book, by the way, The Ethical Slut. By yeah, I heard, heard about it. Yeah, Janet Hardy and Dossie Easton. Fantastic. The the original came out in 97. So that's how long people have been talking about this book. Um, uh, but but Ron and Lisa Young were, are going to be discussing how polyamory is difficult in the black community because of the whole culture stereotypes mm-hmm. of, that 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 people of color have had to face. And I, I can't wait to read it. I think it's going to be fascinating. And I'm, I'm going to make my therapist read it, too. Yeah, it sounds like he needs to. Yeah, that's a problem that we have. You know, I would think that, as you know, you look around the Internet, the, the face that's attached to polyamory is white. Yes. And generally male. I see and that. Even well. For the graphic that I found, you know, I was looking everywhere for a graphic for my thumbnail. And that's mm-hmm. all I could find. And so... um I think it's it's just really challenging, especially for black women who the primary the primary belief system under which they operate is Christianity, yes. which does not necessarily allow for this kind of relationship. So if even if that's what they want, they're going to be going straight up against their religious teachings, and then all the judgments of the biblical people, you know, people to follow the Bible in their own family and friend groups. So mm-hmm. I would think it'd be really extra challenging for a black woman to, you know, to f- decide that this is what she wants to do. She's going to be, it's like an uphill battle. Yeah. And it's, I think it helps that most of the, most of the people I know who are polyamorous are actually pagan. 
were not Christian um, or or atheist mm -hmm. or agnostic because because too many of us have have found certain facets of Christianity or Judaism or Islam to be toxic right for us not for everybody else but for us personally um, so we just don't we don't care if you do we'll respect you if you do but we don't let me get you guys you guys have any other questions for her we'll take about three more questions and um, you know then I want to let her enjoy the rest of her day because I only asked her to donate an hour of her time let's see Oh, somebody okay, just said that I, I love my parents and they take care of my, my partners. And they take care of me. Yeah. And I take care of them, too. They are they never go without uh, clean underwear, lunches for when they go to work, because I stay at home. I'm a stay at home spouse. Um, so they get their lunches made for the next day. G always has his coffee ready for without having to think about it. Um, they always have clean laundry. That's what I do. It's all the little things that I do for them that show them how much they mean to me. Oh, do I think they will pass poly relationships in court? I don't know. Um, I would like that right now when we when we sell this house and use it to buy another larger place down the road um, so that Kay, Kay has more space with us what we're going to have to do is form an LLC and let mm -hmm. the corporation or the trust buy the house right? and have him pay into it. Um, and that way he is legally protected financially in the house. If something happens to the two of us, like if we're, you know, if we're going to go see family, we're in a accident on the highway, that way he won't lose his home. Right. That's important. Um, so we've had to, we had to, come up with ways to keep him safe and, and to protect him. Uh, is there, is there should be a correlation between income and ability to provide? Well, I mean, not, not all polyamorous people live together. You can be solo poly. You can live on your own and have multiple partners that all know about each other. And y'all take care of your own finances. I, I think have, she's, she's talking about, she's referencing polygamy, polygamy, which, you know, in, the yeah. African culture is supposed to be the man has equal homes, you know, everybody's treated the same. And that's a different thing. Um, a Rogers than polyamory because I yeah. said, maybe you missed it at the top of the show. This is talking about um, multiple relationships between single people. So you really should have your own mm. stuff working. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Maya, for saying that we are an authentic poly relationship. We've worked hard at this. I mean, there's, <sighs> G jokes that there's the required reading. Anytime a new person messages him on, you know, a dating site, he always asks them, have you done the required reading? <laughs> G is no joke. Here's another question for you. Let's see. What's my advice to women who are interested in this lifestyle? Okay. Um, how good at you are, uh, how good are you at organizing, organizing your time? How much time do you want to spend possibly dealing with other people's drama? Because the more partners you have, the more partners they have. And you might not always get lucky and have a great metamor. You might have somebody who isn't that good of a person. Um, I've had that problem. G dropped her like a hot potato because she didn't respect me. Uh, cause he will not tolerate disrespect of me or himself. Um, any partner I have who disrespects any of my other partners, they get dealt with. And if they can't grow up, they're gone. Plain and simple. I will not let them be disrespected. You've considered poly relationships. What advice do you have for giving? Oh, well, I would do some, some reading and a lot of soul searching. I highly recommend The Ethical Slut. I recommend Poly Secure by Jessica Fern, um, particularly if anyone has a background like I do of sexual trauma. Um, it's a fantastic book for dealing with trauma responses and consensual non-monogamy. Um, 
figuring out where to find partners. Oof. Good luck, darling. Um, <laughs> I, I found my long distance partner on a group in Facebook um, for polyamorous uh, people who like a specific genre of, of uh, fiction. Um, it's uh, called poly geekery. Um, and it's, I mean, they, they have rules. Like if you, if you start getting messages from people that you didn't solicit, they kick those people out of the group. I mean, they're, oh, very, nice. they're, they're very protective of everybody's privacy and autonomy in the group. Um, so I met my long distance partner, A, there. Um, but K, I mean, we were friends with his ex before he, they were together. And then after they got together, we met him. And um, then all that, you know, happened. Here's our last question of the day. Donnie, Danny, I'm sorry. Danny's question. Where do I find people who are poly? Um, well, go hang out in, in venues that are that cater to the LGBTQ plus community or to the kink community, both of which have a lot of overlap in polyamory. And you can just meet people, make friends, get your eyes open, your horizons broadened. And I mean, the worst case scenario when you're trying to find a new partner for polyamory is you ha you make a new friend. That is, if that's the worst thing that happens, that's awesome because you have a friend. How cool is that? And it's so hard to make friends as an adult. Yeah, so, it is. So, um, you know, I've, I've met these great people who I thought were cute, but they live too far away or we just don't click, but we, we love to talk about literature or we love to talk about, uh, one guy <sighs> will sit around and, and chat late at night with, uh, with a glass of whiskey each talking about poetry, but he's in California and I'm in the Midwest and never the twain can meet. <laughs> so, you know, we just chill and, and enjoy our friendship. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it's not easy to find poly people because we're hiding. A lot of us, like if, if G's boss found out, if G's very Catholic boss found out, he could lose his job. Oh, I didn't even think of that aspect. Yeah. And so a lot of us hide. That's why I keep using pseudonyms and initials. Mm -hmm. And I'm not even using their real initials. I'm using their initials of their nicknames. Just an initial. <laughs> right. <laughs> And um, have I considered writing a book on, on the subject? I don't know. I mean, I got my hands full with the burlesque troupe and three men. <laughs> yeah, she don't have time for that. You write it. <laughs> she, I felt so good that she came and donated this hour to us to, to, to educate us about this. Girl, you were so wonderful. I'm well, so I'm glad, glad you here. responded to my cry for help. <laughs> well, and I, I wish, you know, wish more people had too, because it would have been a fun, fun discussion. Well, um, they did, but I'm just thinking they never got the eat just like you did. But that just happened to look up and see, you know, you in the chat. And so yeah. I was like, oh, my God. I was like, oh, I know what I can do. I will. I'll send a message on Reddit and I'll hop over to the YouTube channel and then figure out something from there. Because right. so that's what I did. I'm so glad you did. So I'm sitting there with my mouth hanging open like, no, this can't be happening. <laughs> And then we have. Know, I would have just been reading from these different papers. I don't know anything about it. Oh man! But and I do want. I want to thank you so much, and uh, I really, really appreciate it. And I've learned a lot. I know they have too. We've all learned a lot. And you know, I like to broaden my horizon. So now, when I go into somewhere and people start talking about, it, I'll say yes, you know, because you know, what yeah. kind of relationship? I do have kitchen table poly or is this me? Which one? Are you? And I actually sound like I know what I'm talking about. Right. And. <laughs> You know, there, there are some great books out there for people who want to learn more. Um, there's one, it's called, it's, it's called Polyamory, coming out about your non-monogamous relationship. It's by um, uh, Pincus and Hiles, I think. And then that was, one just came out in 2017. Then there's Ethical Slut, which is like amazing. I, I have a copy of it right here. It is the best book ever. Um then there's uh, Nonviolent Communication, A Language of Life. That's good for everybody. Even monogamous people should read that book. Mm -hmm. Nonviolent Communication um, by Marshall B. Rosenberg. That is 
a very important book. Um, more than two, a lot of people swear by it, by uh, Vo and Rickert, but I have some issues with that one personally. Um, and then Polysecure, which is the one about trauma attachment and consensual non-monogamy. And that's just a tip of the iceberg. There are so many great books out there. There are great well, I think podcasts if people out started there. with the, your recommendations, they would have a pretty strong foundation, I think. Yeah. So, you know, and the, there's the polyamory subreddit um, as well. And, you know, you can get questions answered there. I mean, there, there are a lot of us cynical people. Like, I don't comment there very often because a lot of people are just like, oh, I, I tried to, you know, we tried to be poly and it didn't work and blah, 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 and toxic, toxic, blah, blah, blah. And <laughs> I'm just like, really, y'all, you're not communicating with each other. You're not respecting each other. You didn't have a good basis for this to begin with. How old are you? Let me guess. Mid twenties. Oh, 19. Yeah. That's your 19? problem. Oh yeah. That's well, I cut this just from what you were saying. It just seems like there has to be solid communication and some really good rules in place for how well, we're going to do this. Everybody needs to know what their personal boundaries are and communicate that. And for any relationship to work, I mean, it doesn't matter if you're monogamous, if you're tennis partners, you have to know what your boundaries are and you have to communicate them. And to have a good relationship, you have to respect each other's boundaries. Absolutely. So Absolutely. that's really what it boils down to. You can't have a good relationship, polyamorous or monogamous without them. Even just, even just, you know, somebody you meet for coffee once in a while, if you can't respect each other's boundaries, it's not going to do anything. Totally. Well, thank you again. You're very welcome. And uh, you have to be here. So you know where it is if you want to go back and watch yourself. Oh, God, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to be thinking about you now. I just mess it with you, girl. I'll just mess it with you. <laughs> But I'll see you later. I'm going to tie, tie up all the loose ends here. Take care. Have you a good too. one. You too, Shelley. Oh, my God. She was great. I'm so happy she responded to my my emergency plea for guests to talk about a topic I don't know crap about. Because, you know, sometimes it's like, you know, I know like the basics of stuff. But I thought this would be better for you, you know, those of you who had some really you guys had some great questions to get them answered by somebody who actually lives it versus me who's just going to research it. You know, it's better to have someone give you firsthand knowledge of the ins and outs and all the traumas and dramas and possible hurdles that you would have to go over as well as to answer any questions you have about those who might be interested and want to get started. You know, she answered that too. Yeah, I liked her too. I thought she was fabulous and funny as heck. So, yeah, I could see how, you know, the dude would be just like mesmerized because quiet as a skeptic, like, you know, a lot of women think that it's guys are just into them for looks and they might be. But generally looks, you know, might get their attention. But what keeps it is your personality. And, you know, a lot of times it's just not what you look like. It's how you how that man relates to you and how he feels when he's around you. And I think that's a lot. A lot of women don't get that. You know, they don't understand that part. And so they spend a lot of effort on hair and nails and clothes and, you know, makeup and all this stuff. And I mean, that's nice. I mean, nobody wants to look like a Gila monster, but that's not what's going to keep a guy's interest in you. It's just not. He has to feel like whatever feelings he gets with you, he can't really get those anywhere else. And then that's that's what will make him be, you know, what you want is to stick around or whatever he's going to do. But um, that's it for today. We got, wow, so we're going to have three shows in a row? I might die because, you know, I had to run to the hospital, right, on Friday. I dipped out of here at the last minute. I almost got in a wreck because I was driving so fast because I was so panicky, um, you know, to see about my aunt because she wasn't breathing. So I was like, you know, like anxious. And so I got there and everything. They did all the tests. And so the internal, she had uh, pneumonia in one lung, but we caught it so quick. So she got dosed up, you know, IV with antibiotics and she got some fluids in her. She's a little dehydrated. And, you know, she just perked right up a couple of hours later. She was feeling better. And then she stayed overnight. And then we brought her home on, on uh, Saturday, I don't know, about seven, maybe. 
And uh, so she's there. And my friend who's a nurse is checking on her for me and stuff. So I came home so I could do my show, but I'm going to run back out there and, you know, check on her myself. But um, tomorrow, so I'm going to be doing DNN tomorrow, right? And then what the fuck Tuesday on Tuesday. So it's going to be three live streams in a row. So um, you guys come on through, you know, you get your Monday night giggles in because Mondays are hard. Mondays are like the worst day ever. But we'll do that on Monday. So you hopefully you guys will have some laughs. And then Tuesday, we got some great uh, some great letters for you, Candace says, from for the Vice Com. People have been sending us some real good stuff. And I'm right here, you notice that Shay has put up a link for a poll. I'm also going to put it in the show. I'm going to put underneath the show once it's finished processing. Um, it's a link to a poll about polyamory and your feelings about it. So be sure to check under the show in the comments. I'll pin it to the top and, uh, you know, just click it and go to Google forms and, you know, let us know what you think about the subject of polyamory and how it reads, what your feelings were after you watched this show. Did it change? It's the same. Are you interested? No. Is it for you? Maybe? No, never. What you think? I'm anxious to hear what you got to say. But anyway, you guys, let me see. What do I got to do here? Uh, I got to do my little slide there. But yeah, be sure to come on through. So you're going to be here with me three days in a row. It's, it's like mini February. And so we'll be here on Monday at six, Tuesday at six. And then today was at four. Okay. So I'll see you guys then. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Thank you, Shay, my lovely friend. Who's always got my back. You guys, thanks for all your well wishes about my little raggedy auntie. She's all right. She's all I got. So I love her to death. And I really appreciate your concern. See you guys tomorrow. Bye-bye.